also a misconception number four is um, you should plumb your compressor system together with the pipe size that comes off the compressor. Yeah, so that kind of speaks to what Mickey is just talking about here. Yeah. I'm thinking of regulators. We refer okay. to that last 30 feet as the dirty 30. Right. Um, go ahead. Yeah, well, it's the uh, uh, pipe size on the compressor discharge um, varies by horsepower. I mean, a, a 20 horsepower might have a three quarter inch, you know. Um, opening three quarter inch pipe, a 50 horse or 30 horse might be a one inch, a 50 horse is an inch and a half. Now these are exact numbers I've seen on machines. Yeah, and once you know, right. 150 horse might be a two inch. Um, that's fine for that point in the system because um, if you take a, a one inch open orifice and and uh, feed it with 100 psi of air that passes hundreds You'd drain of a CFM plant. of air. You'd have to drain a plant. At that point. But you can't stay with that pipe size if you plan on running pipe any great distance around a plant or a loop or system or you know some of these plants are, are 100,000 square foot buildings, you know, 200,000 square foot. You know, we've got uh, uh, some buildings up in Kenosha that are 1.1 million square feet buildings. Well, if you ran that three quarter inch pipe off of a off of a 20 horse compressor for that mile worth of pipe, by the time you get get around and get it's going to have pressure drop because pipe is resistant to airflow and air hose is even more resistant to airflow. So, and uh, it, really I cringe when I see a guy who piped up his plant with air hose strung through the rafters all over the whole place. I mean, you know, that's, um, that's horrible. And, uh, but you need to size your pipe according to distance and amount of pipe you know so the farther you go the bigger the pipe you need to overcome pressure drop um, because of the natural internal resistance of airflow within a pipe and and the uh, you need to maintain a certain velocity in the pipe um, and it's there's a lot of dynamics that go into right. it. There's a lot of physics behind it. Uh, there are charts that are make it very easy uh, for specking out pipe size. Uh, the charts are based on CFM airflow and um, CFM airflow expected and at what pressure in the plant. And then they uh, uh, give you recommended sizes for, you know, number of feet that's involved. So it's, it's, uh, it's more than just taking a three quarter inch pipe off your compressor and thinking that that's going to be sufficient. It might be if your plant is, you know, if you're piping up your garage or, you know, a very small area, it might be sufficient. But, but if you're going to be going you know, 100 feet this way, 100 feet that way, and 100 feet back, well, um, then you have to increase your pipe size maybe up to inch and a quarter or inch and a half, you know. For One of the analogies I've always used, and I think I shared that with you one day, is that uh, if you had a garden hose sitting in your front yard and you're trying to water your front yard, you can cover a given area, right? You add two hoses to that and go to your backyard, you're not covering nearly as much area. All the restriction of that. The fire department has the same water pressure you got, but they got holes this big and they're shooting over top of the building, okay? And the end result is just what you said. Too small diameter, too much restriction. You can't flow through that. So you have to, to, to compensate for that, you have to have a larger pipe or larger a larger system. 
So this is the one area where bigger is better. Yeah, well, yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, you pressure. can't hurt by putting too much in, but it's going to be costly. It's going to be costly. And I suppose that's another misconception out there is I'm just going to put a massive header that's right. going to become my air tank. Right. Uh, it's from an economical standpoint, <laughs> it does not make sense. Storage, purchasing storage, standalone storage is by far much less. Do you ever work, uh, work out a length of pipe that's, uh, you go pi r squared times the length and find out how many actual cubic feet or gallons or whatever you want to go in there, it's minimal, especially even in two inch pipe. Yeah, two inch or lower doesn't make yeah, sense. Yeah. When you get to the larger size, yeah, it, right. it does add up. Yeah. I just wanted to touch on a point about um, you know, pipe sizes as we just discussed. Regulators is another very resistive um, component in a compressed air system. We often see um, customers will put, or even machine man OEM machine manufacturers will put in a regulator based on you know, a cylinder size or the port size. Um, it could be a very inappropriate way of sizing it. You really need to look at the flow um, chart, uh, the characteristics of the, the flow of that regulator. And there's a performance curve that... Um, it's the, called the droop. Droop, is that what they call it? Yeah, okay. It, um, it drops, the pressure drops off extremely quickly. Oh, absolutely. I mean, as soon as you start to flow some compressed air, it, it drops it off very quickly. So you need to look at the performance curve when you're... Well, how you compensate for that is there are... There they're spring operated regulators, okay? And those are the ones that sit here, they, they drop there and they lose. You know, it's 100 pounds, it drops down to 75 pounds, it wiggles a little bit and come back to 100 pounds again. Uh, or there is uh, diaphragm air compensated uh, types, are, they're called, uh, I'm trying to remember now what the term is. Pilot operated. Pilot operated regulators. But they will sit at 100 and move maybe three or four pounds, okay? And those types of regulators are the ones you should use in those locations so you don't overpressurize the system to get just across the regulator. That's good. So those are components that we use yeah. for a point of use um, requirements or machine by machine. Then we see some guys put regulators back by their compressor area. That's probably the worst spot to put them, unless you're a small system. But when you get into larger, you want to use mass flow uh, type regulators right. that are measuring the pressure on either side and using a, a modulating butterfly valve. Um, so the pressure drop across that is very low, very low. Uh, you know, PSI or even less. So. Uh, yeah, that, uh, you don't want to run your plant at higher pressure. Again, we said that we're going to say this more than once. Every two PSI is one percent of your total all energy. If you're running your, if you can run your plant at 100, but now you're running that at 125, just because mm -hmm. uh, that 125 is costing you 12 and a half percent of your energy. And oftentimes you find uh, uh, that if a customer finds he has to keep increasing his pressure from one year to the next, usually tells you what? Your, your, your equipment that you're running with that compressed air, be it a CNC or air tools or something, is beginning to degrade internally. In other words, the air cylinders, the seals, are beginning to degrade, or they're not being lubricated, so it takes more pressure to move that cylinder back and forth. You know, if there, a lot of these machines have uh, air lubricators on it for the pneumatic com components. Well, air lubricators, they run out of oil, and no one knows that device is even there, or what it's for, you know, no one fills it back up again. So. A year from now, all those cylinders are, they're just, they're just hard to move, you know. So we crank up the pressure, you know, so we get that cylinder to move. Or on the other, the other side is uh, like air solenoid valves. They start leaking internally. You don't hear the leak internally. So that leak causes a pressure drop internally in the machine. You don't hear it because a lot of those solenoid valves on the exhaust port, they have, they have a muffler. So you don't hear it, and uh, especially with all the other background noise. And so now they've got pressure drop because of internal leakage. So what do we do? We crank up the pressure. What does that do? The higher the pressure, the more you're going to leak. The more air, the more CFM that you're going to lose. So it's, uh, you know, it's, these, these are all misconceptions that we need more pressure. Well, why, you know, let's go back. If 
find out why you all of a sudden need more air. That, that, I mean, I, it all of a sudden it made me think of variable speed air compressors because one thing about variable speed air compressors is that you can put one in, unlike a load unload that has to go through two pressure points. And again, a variable speed air compressor will save you energy because the, the lower the CFM load, the less you're going to pay in energy. And it's not true about every air compressor. But you can dial in pressure one pound at a time. And so you can find out where your pressure point is. Meaning that, okay, we'll start at 125 on, on Monday. But on Wednesday, we're going to 120. And on, on the following Monday, we're going to 115. And we're dialing it down to find out where our problems are. Once we find that problem, let's go fix it. It may not be a real issue. Let's find out who's complaining out there. If that person out there is complaining, I don't have enough pressure, and you find out we just had the same issue that you got too many disconnects, you got all this stuff, and he doesn't have it. Well, let's fix the holes. Get through. Now let's start dialing it down again. And I guarantee you, I'm going to say, I want to say 90%, but there are many, many plants out there that are overpressurized. Mm -hmm. And oh, I yeah. said the advent of, of the uh, variable speed compressors really helps you deal in a, uh, dialing on that pressure that you need. That's really good.